Well, we've taken a little break to come off the river here. The, the wind's kicked up on us a bit, and we thought this would be a perfect time to take a break. And Kelly's going to give us the pleasure of tying us up a special little fly you have just for the Kootenai River. And what's it called? You bet. This is a Julia. A Julia. Uh, nice little wet hackle fly, kind of an intermediate fly. Use it as a dropper a lot. Real pretty fly. Oh, it's pretty. It's real bright colors. Um, it's not necessarily your match of the hatch type fly. <laughs> But uh, it seems to grab a lot of attention, and we've caught a lot of fish on it this year. Excellent. Well, go ahead and let's get to it. You bet. We're going to use a size 12 TMC 2487 hook. We're going to use some bright orange 8 aught thread. We're going to use two fibers of mallard flank for the tail, some red frostbite floss for the body. For the thorax, we'll use some bright green dubbing and a soft partridge for the hackle. I'll just go ahead and build a base with that orange thread. It don't wrap up and lose our uh, body by twisting it. All right, the next step then would be to take uh, an, a couple of fibers from this mallard flank feather. And just two. Just two. Yeah, that's just a nice, long, wispy tail on this fly. Let's see if I can... Nice, long, nice, long tail. I'm, I'm not real concerned about proportion in terms of the length of the body to the okay. tail. In fact, it almost looks disproportionately long. The next stage then is we'll go ahead and build up just a kind of a fine body on the back with this plastic. Yeah, now it's not a real floss. I said it was a uh, frostbite, a red frostbite right. floss. It's more of a, a plastic mesh. Yeah, it's a, like a woven plastic mesh. I think you could probably use it that way. Uh, the fly body in some cases, but I, I treat it a lot like floss. Um, I'll put it on there okay. and then just, whoops, wrap the body. I'll wax the thread a little bit with some dubbing wax. Put some of that bright green dubbing oh, okay. on there. Some people don't like the wax. I, I never use it. I just use this dubbing skin on the fingers, and I find that's good. But I think a real good wax a lot of times is handy. It really does help, in my case, to help that uh, dubbing to just kind of grab that line. And I don't want it real tight. I want it to trap a little air. Okay. And kind of make, give it a nice buggy looking appearance. Oh, yeah. oh, my. I'm going to just strip off some of that loose fluff. Fluff, yeah, <laughs> fluff from that cartridge hackle. Just a couple of turns, really. Pinch that down. And the nice thing about that green thorax is it holds that partridge fiber out away from the fly body in the water. Kind of, kind of creates a taper, just okay. a, like an inverted teardrop. Just a couple of loops, really. I just want a little fiber to give it some motion in the water. Just to finish off the uh, fly, then I'm going to pull that hackle back and wind that head back just a little bit over the lead edge of that hackle. What it tends to do is taper that back over the body just a little bit. Well, Kelly, great tie. Thank you very much. Little Julia, put one in your fly box. I know I'm going to take this one and put it in mine. It's a great little pattern. It's been a fantastic fly for us here on the Kootenai. Um, works very well beneath a dry fly, particularly when you have a new angler who's not really accustomed to fishing. Yeah. Give him a nice strike indicator, if you will, with the dry fly, and the Julia just does its magic. Oh, beautiful. Well, I know there's a whole bunch of fish waiting out there for us. Why don't we pack up and get to it? Put it to some use. All right.